My name is Morten and this is my journey into photographing the stars and deep sky objects. Tonight I will try to capture the Orion Nebula, Messier 42. Uh, looks like there's going to be some clouds, but hopefully I will get enough data to show you a good image. Here we are in Pix Insight. It's been a couple of weeks actually since I captured the last data of the Orion Nebula. The special thing about the Orion Nebula is that the stars in the center of the nebula are so very bright that they will be overexposed. Uh, and the uh, immediate area closest to the stars as well. Uh, so that's why I have captured this nebula with three different exposure settings. Starting with 10 seconds for the immediate center, 30 seconds for the area next to the center and 240 seconds for the surrounding gas cloud. The uh, light frames for the individual exposure times will be calibrated with their own calibration frames and then stacked together into a master light frame for each individual exposure time. The three different master light frames then will be joined with the HDR composition process in PixInsight. First, let's take a look at some individual subs. Here is a one 10 second exposure. You can see a lot of noise. Here is one uh, 30 second exposure. You can see some more nebulosity. But you also see that you're starting to overexpose the core. And here you can see a four minute exposure where you have a lot more nebulosity but also overexposed around the central stars. The individual light frames were stacked. So this is a stack of 80 10 second exposures. This is a stack of 80 30 second exposures and this is a stack of i think it was 61 four minute exposures with a total of 221 exposures uh, with a total integration time of five hours let me show you quickly the uh, process for integrating with HDR composition. Under processes, all processes and HDR composition, uh, you will add files. I have actually done some dynamic background extraction on my master light frames for each of the 
light frames uh, at the different exposure times. So I have 10 second, 30 second and 240 seconds master light with the dynamic background extraction already performed. Uh, and the default settings, I prefer to bump up the mask smoothness and the mask growth and I also deselect output composition masks because I don't really use that. And then you just click on apply global. Now one thing to keep in mind that for these three or more if you have it light frames for the individual exposure times uh, they of course been calibrated with their own calibration frames but you also need to register these uh, light frames to align the stars on the master light frames before you run the HDR composition process. If you don't do that the stars will probably not be aligned and you will have a very bad result. Now this is finished and we will open up a, a screen transfer function to auto stretch this image. And here you have the results of the uh, HDR composition for the three stacked light frames. Now the next thing you want to do is to take care of the overexposed areas. And uh, that will only work after you permanently stretch the image. And you might want to do some processing steps before you go there. So for the sake of this uh, small presentation I will show you. Let me open up a histogram transformation. Reset that. And do the auto stretch. I will copy that settings over to the histogram transformation, reset it, and then apply it. So this image is now permanently stretched. And I will open up process, all processes, and HDR multiscale transform. Now you can play around with the number of layers depending on the results that you want to have. Uh, I also want to check to lightness and lightness mask. And then I just apply it to my image. And now you can see that instead of an, an overexposed angry core, we have a somewhat nice image. If I zoom in, I can see details, I can see the stars here. And I'm pretty happy with that. In order to completely process this image, I followed my usual routine. I made a few adjustments to curves and the background. I also made a range mask to be able to select the only the nebulosity. I made a starless version with the starnet feature that will that allowed me to process only the nebulosity in here. Also remove a bit by a, a bit of the background. Uh, I made a mask of the stars. I also made a range mask to be able to isolate the nebula like I said and I also made a combined uh, ranged star mask to be able to manipulate the image uh, with the uh, ability to preserve both nebulos nebulosity and the stars. And when I was happy with these two images I combined them using the pixel math uh, process and that gave me a, a final image that 
looks like this. I made some slight uh, color saturation and some curves adjustments in the end. I would have liked to have the image a bit more sharper. Uh, it will probably look better with even more exposure time in total. Five hours is not so much with a regular non-modified DSLR. Even though I used a, a Bader UHCS L booster filter when capturing this. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this type of content, please click on the subscribe button. If you want to see me do a video on anything else, please leave a comment. Until the next time, I wish you all clear skies.